Well, this is Dr. Mobin Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show and I hope you had a great weekend. The discussion today is again for BA4 and BA5, but mostly in the context of UK. There is more data from there. BA4 and BA5 are more prevalent there compared to the US. And if I can give you a quick summary of uh, the overall impression of the discussion today when I was collecting the data, I don't think that the BA4 and BA5 are looking as bad as some folks are making it look bad. So let's look at the data together. And I would actually be interested in your opinion as well, that am I correct in doing this, in saying that this doesn't look bad? So here is drbean.com. If you'd like to have access to about 900 more premium content videos, there is a link in the description of this video for $67 price one time, never again. And all the new lectures continue to become accumulated as well. So take advantage of that. This is the report that some part of the discussion today, the data comes from this report. This is UK Health Security Agency, technical briefing number 43, 24 June, 2022. Some data is going to come from our world in data. So this is about the hospitalization and deaths. I don't really am looking at the cases other than the number of cases in terms of long COVID are interesting. So I would instead give you the, the numbers for long COVID because cases are not a reliable number at this time. So this is the same thing, the data. Here is the reference from where the technical briefing, you can also go and open them. This is a study or really a paper that I discussed a couple of days ago. Why did I want to have this paper here today? I wanted to make sure that we can compare and contrast the actual outcome of BA4 and 5 and the research work that Harvard University researchers did. According to the researchers, and I presented that a couple of days ago, According to the researchers, uh, BA4 and 5 and BA12.1 have escaped vaccines and previous infections. So they are on their own. They're a new free form variant, let's say new COVID pandemic. However, if you look at clinical data, you would see a very different picture of BA4 and 5. So I wanted to make sure that we can compare and contrast. So I have this study and it's uh, result here as well. Then this is the uh, study from our beloved professor Tim Spector and his team, the one who runs the Zoe app as well. This is their uh, paper that came out on June 18, 2022 about the long COVID and its prevalence in Delta ver versus uh, Omicron. So with this, let's start our discussion. Here is a technical brief. I have been looking at this brief and highlighting it. Let's just go over the, the points that I have collected. So medical disclaimer, this is not an advice, more of an information and educational discussion. I have no disclosures. These are the references. References are in the description of this video as well. Summary is this. The Omicron, even BA4 and 5, still continue to have runny nose, sore throat, fatigue as the primary diagnostic markers. There are many other. And this is in contrast to people continuing to say, well, it's going to attack the lower respiratory system now. It's going to go in the lungs now. It's going to create this issue or that issue. No, so runny, it is still on the upper side. Runny nose, sore throat, fatigue. Why runny nose and sore throat still more than the lower respiratory system in majority as were the previous variants? The reason is that it can survive better in sore throat and runny nose type of infections compared to going deeper in the tissues because then it would kill us and it will die with us. So that is survival mechanism. That is the survival of the fittest. Fatigue is something that is really important to keep in mind. This is what happened to me last week. When last week I became sick again for a couple of days, I didn't have any fever, but I had fatigue, muscle aches, joint pains. I could not walk correctly. I was sleepy. I was emotionally disturbed. It was just weird. 
and somebody said here when we were discussing our um, points, somebody said it may have been allergies. And allergies do not have fatigue like things normally until there is a mass cell activation and others. But normally allergies do not have that. So fatigue and headache separates the COVID symptoms from the hay fever-like symptoms or allergies. BA5 is slightly more advantageous in terms of transmission compared to BA4, but they are very close cousins. Almost you can call them the same thing. Growth rate change is small. So they are changing the growth rate, of course. BA4 and 5 have a growth rate more than BA2 and 1. Only then these are expanding. But if you see their expansion is slower, their intensity is lesser. So they have small advantage. And I'm using this word small from the technical briefing. This is not my word. And I would show you later on. Severity change is small as well. Again, I'm using, I'm borrowing this word from the technical brief instead of me coining this word. Vaccine efficacy is not different compared to BA1 and 2. This is from the technical brief. This is very interesting. So UK is saying we have BA4 and 5 almost and BA1, 12, 1, almost to 50% compared to BA1. And we still feel that the vaccine efficacy is equal to BA1 and 2. That's what UK is saying. And I'll show it to you. The New England Journal of Medicine study, which we discussed a couple of days ago, they said these data show that BA2121, so wherever I said 1121, please correct that to 2121, BA4 and BA5 subvariants substantially escape neutralizing antibody induced by both vaccination and infection. And I actually discussed these numbers with you a couple of days ago where the escape was sufficient to say that infection or the vaccine is doing nothing anymore. So this is one researcher and their groups observation. And here I'll show you that UK's tech brief says vaccine efficacy is not changed. So now who is saying what? I think I would trust researchers more. Again, I love UK and their data as well. I would trust the researchers more because they present a research based on some data they're seeing. So then the question could become, then why is UK saying that, hey, this is Vaccine efficacy is the same. I think they're saying this because the intensity of the viruses has not increased. The escape has not meant that the virus is now lethal and is causing problems. Long COVID still being one of them. Okay, so continuing. Hospitalization change is small as well. This small uptick in the hospitalization change. And I would show you the graph that compared to previous upticks with BA1 and 2, this is a very tiny uptick. And I wish Paul Bork was here to do more justice to these numbers. And then, uh, and he's here. So Paul, welcome. We were missing you last week. Death numbers continue to stay low as well. And finally, long COVID with Omicron, BA5 not included because we don't have that data yet. Death, uh, sorry, long COVID numbers are about half of that of Delta. So about 4.5, according to Tim Spector and team's work, about 4.5% or 1 in 23 patients are still suffering symptoms after a month of COVID. Compared to Delta, where more than 10% would have the symptoms. So almost half the long COVID. So that's a good news. So if we, in general, if you look at this summary, this summary is not saying that our summer has become difficult. So let me now balance it out. Summer is difficult if the cases are a lot and those turn into long COVIDs. Then even when the percentage of long COVID in Omicrons are less, the sheer number of cases would give rise to a larger count of long COVID. Okay, so with this, let's now look at the data detail. 
if you just wanted to have the summary, this is the summary. And I had to pull this data from three, four, five places. So I think this is a good summary if you just wanted that. Now, symptoms. Zoe app. Runny nose, sore throat, fatigue, feeling stressed, brain fog, headache, feeling stiff. I actually was feeling stiff. Feeling down, lower back pain. I actually had the lower back pain as well. I kept thinking something to do with my bed. I have an, uh, what is that, sleep number bed. So I kept playing with the with the numbers to say, did I incorrect, uh, uh, did I set it to some incorrect setting? Is this the correct number? Uh, so I had lower back pain. I had joint pains. I had muscle pains. I had stiffness. Uh, I did not have headache, luckily. And then uh, fatigue I had. I had runny nose as well, but I didn't have sore throat. And feeling stress is just my <laughs> common state. So I do not know it happened because of this or not. So these are the symptoms. Again, if these symptoms, majority of them, if you wanted to separate them from hay fever, what are you going to look at? At least headache, sore throat are not. And fatigue, fatigue is very important. Are usually not hay fever. Okay, continuing. So just talked about this, BF4 and 5. This is uh, Professor Tim Spector and his uh, team's work. That work is here. Um, where? This one. So risk of long COVID associated with Delta versus Omicron variant. And this is a part of the um, paper which is interesting. Among Omicron cases, 4.5% versus Delta, 10.8%, almost 11%, experienced long COVID. Omicron cases were less likely to experience long COVID for all vaccine timings with an odds ratio of these ratios. So they have a, a table here as well that is interesting to see. So I want to continue with the Omicron BA4 and 5. I'm not doing a long COVID discussion. So less likely to have long COVID compared to Delta. What will BA5 do? We don't know yet. But remember, in my opinion, these variations are making the virus more and more human friendly. This is what I've been saying for two years. And this is what people keep challenging me. That no, you don't know. It's, it's about to become more intense. It's about to become more lethal. Or it has not become milder and you are wrong. So the data is here. BA4 and 5 long COVID, we just looked at this one. Status in the UK. So in UK, this is now from the tech brief, 18 May 2022 is when BA4 and 5 were made variant of concern from variant of investigation or under investigation. Today is 27th June. So 18 May to 27th June, there is not sufficient data to see the outcomes at least not in the tech brief, because they go up to, I believe, 22 May. However, we can see that data in our world in data, and I think we can make a make an opinion. Now the BA4 and 5 collectively are becoming dominant. Incidence is still increasing. BA5 slightly more than BA4. The growth rate is 1.1. So it is growing. It is not stable. It's not below. It's not receding. It is. So the number of cases are increasing. Now, here is the first thing to look at, severity. This is now from the tech brief. The real-time infection hospitalization risk has been growing since April 2022. So April of this year, the risk of hospitalization has been increasing. This is still a relatively small effect at present. So April, May, we are in June, still a small effect. I do not know what we are waiting for. It has a small effect. The reason is unclear, and if confirmed, may have both variant antigenesis plus minus fit fitness and population immunity contributors. So look at the verbiages. And once again, I love the data from UK. 
However, here, population immunity contribution. So on one end, we are seeing that UK is saying, hey, population, they 97% have zero positive antibodies or are zero positive, have antibodies, 97%. We looked at the New England General Medicine Harvard study that said useless. These antibodies are of no use. Here they are speculating that it is probably because of antibodies. I think we should also continue to consider it is also possible that the virus itself is becoming more and more fit to live in us by becoming lesser and lesser lethal. Long COVID continues to be a story that we need to look at. So here, if you look at these graphs below, these are from our world in data. This part on the right side in, in this graph here, this is the number of COVID-19 patients in hospital. I skipped the cases altogether. I, cases is not the right indicator. Neither are they counted correctly. So United States and UK, these are the patients in hospital. Now, remember that BA4 and 5 were given the v VOC status in May 18th, although they were there before that. So if they had something huge to do in terms of intensity, we would have seen that by now. There is a small uptick. So I zoomed in over here. So if you see, there is a tiny bit of an uptick. I mean, if you wanted to say, well, there is some change. So yes, there is some change, which is really minor. I can actually go to the... One second, please. So if I go here to this one, so this is hospitalizations. So if I try to zoom in, so look at this number. Look at the bigger picture first. Here is how hospitalization has been. I can uh, remove other countries, but look at UK. We're talking about UK. Look at this green bar. So you can see the last nudge there is an upward nudge there. On this green bar in the UK, the numbers were, let's say we go to May 18, when the status was not was given, it was there already. So May 18, this is May 19, 6,771 people in hospital. And today, let me just zoom in now. Today in, let's say here, June 19, 7,000 compared to June, sorry, May, where is May? May 18, 7,849. So almost similar. And BA4 and 5 have been out there before May 18. So if they were going to cause more intense outcome because these variants are bad, then we would have been seeing them by now. Back here to the, I really do not like PowerPoints. <laughs> Actually, I hate PowerPoint. But anyways, today's data was less prone to be drawn and written, so I used it. Anyways, so severity, small change, slight upward change, really not the kind of change that, at least so far, it is not a big change. Now, infection hospitalization risk, or IHR. This is also from the tech brief. Leading up to January 2021, so they're giving a context. January 2021, last year's beginning, the real-time infection hospitalization risk was increasing, driven by a combination of the more severe alpha variant and increased age profile of the cases. So they said increasing, it was... Since January 2021, the infection hospitalization risk steadily decreased until August 2021 when Delta started coming in, when we observed a rise due to waning immunity in the oldest age group. And then we had the Delta, I believe, as well. Since April 2022, April now this year, a rise in the estimate of IHR has been observed. So there is an uptake in the hospitalization risk. It is unclear why the IHR may be rising. And at present, this is a small effect. 
close monitoring is required. So they are saying, remember the data is up to May. So is it really Omicron? Because Omicron was out there in December. So it's not that it just came in. So they're saying in April, we are seeing an uptick. Is it Omicron? Is it BA4 or 5? We still need to see, but the change is very small. And I was looking at their numbers. Many of the change numbers cross the unity line. So they are kind of not even significant. So here, this is a change. So if you look at this graph, and if you start from here, this is December 2020 and Feb 2021, here big ones. And then you continue to see over here, this is infection, hospitalization, risk. And here, look at the risk. This is zero, this line below. This line is one and then two and continuing on. The risk is still trending upwards, but still below one. So small, a, a few percentage increase. For example, I think it is about 60 1.6 is the risk now of hospitalization. So that is almost trending towards double. But the risk of hospitalization was all already quite low compared to what it was doing before. So on that low number, even when there is, let's say, 65% increase, that still is a smaller number. Then deaths, the sad part. And once again, if you look at the data, look at the extreme right side of this table. That is UK and US. And I'm going to go to the um, document here. So this is the deaths data. So if I can, in, so look at this. Here, this is just UK. And in the February 7, 2022, this year, Omicron wave beginning December, January, February, right? So look at the numbers, UK 3.29 per million seven-day rolling average deaths. From there, we are in BA4 and 5 time, half and half. And the number is 0 0.72 per million seven days rolling average so 0 0.72 now compared to 3.945 in january beginning of omicron and then it dipped down then it went up again so here if you see april it went up and i think that is what they were saying that it ticked up in april we do not know why it went to 4.75 and then it dropped again to 0 0.67. So this time it is at the lower end. If I zoom in now, if you see here, these numbers, June 11, 0 0.98, then June 16, for example, 0 0.64, at this time, 0 0.82. So it is kind of within this range. So when somebody says that, hey, the number of deaths are increasing, at least see what does the increase mean? So that is the death rate. And this is just a zoomed in graph, which I just showed. Now, we discussed this a couple of times already. BA4, 5, and vaccine. So New England General Medicine, they said these data show that we have subvariant BA. 2, 12, 1, BA4, BA5, subvariants substantially es escape neutralizing antibodies induced by both vaccine and infection, right? So that created a lot of press and news, and I talked about it as well. The clinical outcomes are not actually in agreement with what to, ex if we wanted to expect that because there is an escape then we have a problem. At least so far, clinical data does not show that. And I wish and pray that it does not show it as, as well. BA4 and 5 have been out there, at least in the UK, since April, May. And they do not show that kind of data. Now, the technical briefing document 
from UK said, so this is this 1.5 vaccine effectiveness. This is them. They are saying there are insufficient data for a robust assessment of the effectiveness of COVID-19 vaccines against mild or severe diseases with BA4 and 5. However, preliminary analysis indicate that the vaccination status of cases infected with BA4 and 5 is not significantly different to that of cases infected with BA2, suggesting that protection conferred by the vaccines likely remains, remains comparable to that observed previously. I would humbly disagree in the light of this vaccine data above. And I would simply say, I don't think that the vaccine and the infection is helping a lot for longer duration of help. It is the virus's change as well. It is we 97% zero positive in the UK and 94-5% in the US as well and other communities too. That all, maybe it is helping. But generally, I think the virus is already adapting as well. Putting it everything in the vaccine basket does not look right to me. Because all the vaccine data or the previous infection data that we're seeing does not support the idea that it is the vaccine stopping the virus. Vaccines have done their job. Great job. Fine. At this time for BA4 and 5, I have on my screen New England Journal of Medicine's study that shows that there is an escape. So then you can see two ways of expressing less intense virus. One way is above, where they're saying that it has escaped. The other one way is below, where they're saying we have a mutation, but the vaccines are still protective. I would can add previous infection to that too. Now, UK Technical Brief had one more paragraph in there that I thought was interesting. They said, the vaccination status of BA4 and 5 cases did not differ significantly from that of BA2 cases. Of course. So meaning in the UK society, it is not that the BA2 vaccination at by that time when the BA2 rolled around and the vaccination status or the percentage in BA4 and 5 is too different. It's not. It's similar. These early data do not indicate a difference in vaccine effectiveness against BA4 or 5 as compared to BA2. However, a formal analysis is needed. So I would not use it. So from this tech brief, it kind of seems like vaccines are working for BA4 and 5. But here I see that BA4 and 5 vaccines are not working. So I would let you please comment. What do you think? This data in New, New England General Medicine is coming from lab observation, but the number of patients was small, 27 and 27. So maybe that is a reason. And once again, we saw the severity before. Now, one more thing, relative growth. So how fast is it growing? How bad is BA4 and 5? So this is the difference between them. So if you see here, this is BA2, BA4, BA5. So BA2, 12, 1. This was, let's say, so this is estimated relative growth rates for BA4, 5, 2 from a multi, uh, multinomial model of sequence cases in England. So if this blue line was taken as a standard one, if something is here, let's say there is no difference from BA1 versus these, then you can see that BA2 is here BA4 is here in the 0 0.14, 0 0.1, between 1.4 and 5. And then BA5 is at 0 0.16. That is a small change in its growth rate difference. It's really small. And here, if you see, this is also relative growth rate. So this is also compared to, let's say, the ancestors. But if you see many of this, uh, the top is BA5, then is unassigned, then BA3, then BA4. But if you see many of these are crossing unity. So their growth rates are kind of so small that they are pushing the data in uncertain uh, limits. Although from a projection point of view, we can say that because BA4 and 5 have now taken 50, uh, BA 
212, 1, 4, and 5 together have taken 50% from BA1. So, of course, they have some advantage. It's a very tiny advantage. So, this summary again, and I'm going to finally, you saw that summary before too. I want to go to a technical brief for a second. Just one quick one. So, here, This is what I wanted to show as well. So here, these uh, big plots or the area graphs are various variants. So here the orange one, this big one, is the BA2. And on the right side, if you see this light blue and the deep green, these are BA4 and 5. So light blue is BA4. Look at the trajectory, how it is um, growing. And then the deep green or blackish is BA5. And if you see, there is there has to be more data to understand more. But this is how these guys are growing. That is another look here as well. Then there was one more graph here. This is another graph. This is various BAs and their relative dominance within UK's sequences. And UK said that we are only sequencing hospitalized or severe cases. They're not sequencing cases. And they think that this sequencing percentages here reflect back to the cases as well. So once again, if you see here, on the extreme right, the red one is BA2, 12, 1, then BA4, green, then BA5, yellow. So collectively, they're projecting towards becoming dominant. Um, on the individual basis, I think one of them is 22% dominant, another 20%, one is, what, 10%, something like that. Then if you are interested, you can look at uh, the dominance in various uh, regions of the UK. What I wanted to show you here was this table as well. Table 3, modeled relative growth rates as doubling times and representation among sequence cases for BA2, 12, 1, 4, and 5. So here, if you look at the numbers actually doubling time, for example, let's see this, 19 June, variant BA2, 12, 1, total samples, 945, percentage, 9.61% of the overall samples. Doubling time is minus 24.38, and confidence interval is minus 10.91 to 104. Very wide plus crossing unity. And that is the same thing here. BA4 is 19.17% and BA5 is projecting 35.14%. So together, the three are dominating now, but still near half. This is the chart I showed you before. And this is it. There is, what do you think? Looking at this, do you feel that this is a bad summer? I think that the number of cases increasing and they're converting into long COVID is going to be a problem. But do you think it is a bad summer that is here or do we need to wait more? How do you see it? <laughs> Zizi Berman says, hi, Beans. I missed everyone. Thank you, Zizi. <laughs> Honored to have you. <laughs> so Janet says, I must have BA4 to 5 feels much different than others. Yes. It's becoming more and more um, upper respiratory. What is interesting for me is, which was not in the Zoe app, the tinnitus. I do not know if they have tinnitus as a list listed item or not. My curiosity is that as it becomes more mild, it should stop causing tinnitus as well. And that would be a sign of it not causing too much clotting and not causing too much ACE binding. That would then allow this to just live here and just be done like another common cold virus. Kelly says, I, I see light green. Okay. <laughs> and yes, please do me a favor. 
become a member of join dr bean on uh, youtube or if you like john snyder says that it has uh, tinnitus i log it when i have it yeah interestingly in his top 10 tinnitus is not listed good that they have it thank you for this <laughs> it is so so it is says thank god i was bo- born with it who was saying that uh, anna was saying and i was saying thank god i was born with tinnitus i'd never know the difference i was i don't know if i was born with it but i had tinnitus very young in very young age so it has never bothered me but when i start listening i know it is there it is actually in both of my ears i still remember when i was very young i used to ask people that hey do you hear this sound and they would say what sound and i'll say this sound like silence sound <laughs> i used to try to articulate it in so many ways so i had it from that age so susan says thinking back on the earlier video should we be worried about the antibodies after the vaccine how about we do this let's stop this video so it doesn't become too long do you want to go back to chat on the same channel or on the cafe channel where do you want to go and very quick question antibodies after the vaccine i don't think that we are in in a worrying state it depends upon the person as well right so imagine if the antibodies are not taking care of the virus the virus says you can see the data it's not causing intense problems but the problem is what is a person's own state of body or immune system bambi says bambi is here in the zoe app So one more question, then we hang up. Patty Zick says, "Can the rapid test pick up the new variant?" Myself and others have had a virulent cold. All symptoms you mentioned, but tests were negative. So I had this a few days ago as well. Test negative. My wife, with that, she also had symptoms, but she normally doesn't have runny nose and others. But she developed the uh, symptoms of uh, this facial paresthesia, which she never had before, and it started after the vaccine. She had it, had that again. and did the test nothing okay so with this um thank you very much for being here please like subscribe and share in the description there are multiple um links i would just mention two or three if you would like to support this work you can use paypal the link is there or you can buy me a coffee or you can become a patron member you can actually become youtube member as well with that thank you very much and i would see you tomorrow unless you want me to do a chit chat on the cafe channel so i'm going to hang up for now thanks please like subscribe and share